Hey everybody, Pete with Optics for Birding here. Uh, gonna give you guys a big rundown of the Swarovski Optic AX Vizio, which everybody is calling the world's first smart binoculars. And, um, you know, just wanted to give you all the different features one by one, but in a nutshell, this is the first pair of binoculars with A, really, really high quality optics, B, a really nice camera, and C, uh, well, it's probably a lot to put under one letter, but it's got the ability to identify birds, mammals, butterflies, dragonflies, uh, and has the potential to be used for identifying literally anything in the future because Swarovski made this an open developer interface. So uh, at the moment, it's really, really useful for the nature observer that wants to get quick IDs of birds and other mammals, uh, as well as certain insects. And it's a future-proof device that I'm really excited to share with you because we don't know what it's going to be able to identify in the future. So uh, we're going to talk about all the features in a sec, but uh, that's uh, the Swarovski AX Visio in a nutshell. So, as I was saying before, Swarovski's branding these as the first smart binoculars, and I do think that that's a very fitting name, but we're going to leave the smart part aside for just a moment and just talk about the binoculars. So, if any of you are familiar with Swarovski's EL or NL Pure binoculars, you know what a good view looks like. Both of those binoculars are using uh, what Swarovski calls Swarovision, which is kind of an umbrella term that means all their best quality glass, all their best quality coatings, field flattening lenses to give you a distortion-free view uh, across the entire picture, as opposed to a sweet spot in the middle and a little fall off in sharpness toward the edges, um, and a nice, uh, comfortable eye box with a lot of eye relief. All of that is present on the AX Visio. Uh, even though this can do tons and tons of other things, Swarovski didn't make any compromises when it came to the binoculars themselves. So uh, the configuration is a 10 by 32 binocular. It's bulky to fit all the electronics, but the binocular itself is actually pretty compact. So what does that mean? 10 power, meaning everything that you see through the AX Visio is going to look 10 times larger than with your eyes, uh, 32 being the diameter of that lens in millimeters. And again, not the diameter of this housing, but just that little piece of glass in there is 32 millimeters across. The reason that they chose that was uh, because this is something that you want to use to identify birds and mammals and get a really up close view of everything. 10 power is about as high as you can go before you start getting a shaky image. And um, what I mean by that is like if there's any, you know, sort of tremor in your hand to start with, as you increase your power, you're going to get more and more of that shake in the image. And that's the last thing that you want when you're trying to take a picture or, uh, you know, get a nice clear view. So that's why they went with 10 power. 32 was probably as big as that they could make the lenses without making a binocular that nobody can hold. So, uh, you know, they're... Most of their higher end binoculars, they started about 10 by 42, uh, but that just would have been way too big for most human hands. I mean, my hands are not teeny tiny, but they're also not huge. And, you know, this to me is pretty comfortable. Uh, to a lot of folks, it might just be way more than you're able to hold um, if it was a 10 by 42. So they picked this as the middle ground. And I think it's actually a really good size. You know, 10 by 32 is not the most popular size that we carry by any means, but it is gaining some traction for those that want to pack a little bit lighter, but still want that extra power that a 10 power gives you. So I have zero complaints at all about the optics. The uh, wonderful image quality that we've come to love from Swarovski is, is definitely not missed out on with the AX Visio, even though you have a ton of other things that you can do. So um, yeah, it's, it's still a beautiful pair of binoculars, even if you don't put the battery in and do all the other fancy stuff. So just wanted to highlight that for a moment. All right, so as promised, I'm not gonna forget about the smart part in the world's first smart binoculars. So let's go ahead and put the battery in. And the way that you do that, there's a really secure little lever that you flip and turn counterclockwise to unlock the compartment. Here's the lithium ion battery that Swarovski made for this. Put it in there. Take the cover and lock it back in place. So. Now that that's in there, uh, that's what makes the binoculars smart. Now that I can turn this on with the power button, you hold it down until it turns yellow. Uh, eventually it's going to turn green and blink for a while. Once you have it at solid green, that means that you're ready to go and start using the binoculars. So now that I've gotten the AX Physio powered on, I want to show you a little bit about the camera. Um, so this optical channel right here, that's what actually houses the camera, which has number one, a 265 millimeter lens and a 13 megapixel sensor behind it. Um, I wanted to make that part really, really clear because the most confusion about the AX Visio so far has arisen from what the camera really does. And um, the important thing to note is with that 265 millimeter focal length that they picked, 
The zoom level of the photos that you're going to get is actually about half of what you would see through the binoculars. So with a 10 power binocular, that's about a, a 500 millimeter equivalent if you're shooting on a full frame camera or if you're looking through a human eye. Um, with the 265 millimeter camera here, you're getting just a little bit past about five optical zoom. So um, again, you know, close to half of what the binocular that can see is not ideal necessarily for your photos, but when you're working with such high magnifications, any little bit of motion blur can really ruin the image quality if you don't have the fancy electronics and gyroscopes that give you the image stabilization. So um, Swarovski picked 265 millimeters to give people decent photos, not necessarily super zoomed in, but at least clear. That way you can still identify the birds or mammals that you, that you capture, and there's not a bunch of motion blur ruining your images. So I, I really wanted to make that clear because I think a lot of people have the impression that the camera and the binoculars are the exact same power, um, when in reality the, the camera is about half. So moving on, uh, let's talk about some of the functions on here. So when you're in the camera mode that I've selected on the little wheel here, uh, that's the function. And then the mode button, this little V, that's what actually lets you switch between the different modes within a given function. And um, in this case, when you have the camera selected, that's what lets you pick either photo or video you're going to see a little red display light up and there's going to be a photo camera and a video camera next to each other. Uh, after you press one of these buttons, you're going to either see the, the photo camera or the video camera balloon up and that's how you know what mode you're in. So once you've selected the mode that you want, you can press the shutter button all the way down to capture either a photo or to start your video. Uh, if you are doing video, you would just press that again when you're done and it'll give you a little time uh, marker so you know how long the video is. Um, I should definitely mention the focusing capability. So this focus wheel here, which focuses the optical channels, just like any pair of binoculars, you're also going to have to use that to get the camera in focus. It does have what we call like pseudo autofocus, where once you're close enough, it can adjust it slightly to get, you know, either the bird or mammal or whatever view you're getting in, in a little bit better focus. But uh, definitely one thing to keep in mind is that if you're used to a camera that has, you know, virtually complete autofocus and all you do is point and press the shutter button halfway down to get a perfect clear image. Um, it's not going to be quite as streamlined here. So you do have to get that really, really sharp so that you get a good photo as well. Just want to make that clear. All right. So now that we've talked about the camera lens a little bit, I want to talk about the, uh, the video and the photo capability. So um, like I said, it does have a 13 megapixel camera and for video, you can record up to 1080p and uh, I believe you can go either 30 or 60 hertz for recording. Um, one thing I haven't talked about yet is the streaming, and that maxes out at 30 hertz, but uh, I might as well address that now. So this is a, uh, you know, a pretty big investment, one of these, let alone two or three of them if you're in a group of people. So one really amazing feature with the AX Visio is that if you have the Swarovski Optic uh, Outdoor app, which is how you actually change the settings on the device and import media, um, if you have a couple friends that have that app as well, you can connect your phone to the AX Visio, and then it'll give you the live view mode where you display a QR code on your phone, and then your friends can all come over and scan that QR code, and then all of a sudden they're looking through the AX Visio 2 just on their phone. So um, if that wasn't uh, <laughs> clearly worded at first, basically what that means is you can stream the view on the AX Visio to five nearby devices at once which is pretty fascinating to me. Also, it would definitely save you a bunch of money compared to buying five or six of them yourself. So if you're uh, you know, leading a, some kind of nature tour, I think that's really useful because then as long as the tour guide has this and knows which birds or plants or mammals to point at, they can do that. And then all the other folks have to do is look at their phone and they're seeing the exact same thing. So pretty fascinating stuff, especially uh, given that you can do it with so many devices at once. Um, the only thing is that you do really have to be in a nature setting. If you're in a building or if you're near a building, you know, some of the Wi-Fi signals can interfere with the Wi-Fi connection from uh, your AX Visio to your phone and the other nearby phone. So that that makes it a little bit tricky, but, you know, it's meant to be out in nature. So when you're out in nature, that's not going to be a problem. All right. So uh, the reason that most of you are probably here, uh, the reason that a lot of you know about Swarovski Optic to begin with is because you're a bird watcher. Um, the feature that is getting the most attention of the AX Visio right now is the bird ID mode. So uh, since the beginning of time, you know, people have wanted to be able to identify birds. We started with uh, just being able to look at a field guide and that's kind of your best shot at identifying something correctly. 
more recently, many of you are probably familiar with uh, something called Merlin Bird ID, which is the Cornell Lab of Ornithology's app that you can download on your phone and either give it a picture of a bird or describe it. And it takes the bird's location into account, all those sorts of things, and it gives you a list of possibilities. Um, we're pretty amazed by what it can do, but you know, admittedly, like having to look at your phone instead of keeping your eyes on the bird, it, it does take away from the experience, despite how awesome the technology is. So uh, finally, we are here at the AX Visio, and what the camera facilitates is basically integrating Merlin into the binoculars. So you have a whole library of different birds that were created by Merlin Bird ID that are now on board the AX Visio itself. And because the AX Visio also has a GPS module on board, it automatically takes into account the photo that you give it and the location so that whatever you're trying to identify in the field is not going to be something outrageous like a penguin in Texas or an ostrich in Alaska or you know somewhere in Russia, for example. So the way that the bird ID works is, of course, you have to get the bird in view. No shocker there. Once you're in the bird ID mode, you have to press the little mode button here to get one of two size reticles. And, you know, just like with Merlin Bird ID, when you give it a photo, it asks you to fill up the box as much as you can with the bird. Same story on the AX Visio. Depending on how far away the bird is and how large it is, you're going to pick one of those two size reticles. And uh, the name of the game is just to get the bird to fill up as much of it as you can. Once you've done that, you do have to make sure that the bird is as closely focused as you can get with the main focus wheel. Then you press the shutter button halfway down. And what you're going to see is that reticle, which is divided up into four parts. The upper right one is going to illuminate once you've achieved the autofocus. And then after you give it some time with that button held down, it's going to keep illuminating the other segments in the wheel. The more it illuminates, the more confident the AX Visio is getting in the ID. Um, sometimes only one, sometimes only two segments will light up, but ideally you want all four. Then you press the shutter button all the way down and it displays the species name, number one. Number two, which is really important and I haven't seen enough people talk about this yet, is the confidence reading. So you get something like long-tailed duck or northern pintail at the bottom. And if the AX Visio is not quite sure, it's going to display, you know, one or two pie slices of that little confidence reading. So the, you know, you got the species name and then a little pie chart right above that. And the more of those pie slices are filled in anywhere from one to four, that means it's getting more and more confident in the ID. So um, I think it makes it a really valuable learning tool, not just an ID tool, because not only do you get correct IDs, and the AX Visio will tell you that when that is the case, but if you get the wrong ID and the AX Visio is saying, hey, you know, we're not really sure this is what it is, um, probably, you know, number one, that gives you uh, an opportunity to get closer to the bird, get a better photo. Um, but secondly, it tells you what the bird isn't as well as what it could be. So um, that, you know, I, I found that really helpful because if I see an ID that I know is wrong, that the AX Visio is also saying is wrong, it starts making me ask, well, okay, why is it wrong? It starts making me look at specific field marks and saying, okay, well, that's why it's wrong. You know, it's uh, the, one of the things I definitely wanted to address is that the, the main criticism of the AX Visio that I've seen so far is that it's taking people out of the moment and letting them then just depend on the technology to do all the bird IDing. And I, I really don't think that's the case because that confidence reading that it gives you, it lets you know if you need to get a better view of the bird or study the field marks more. Um, and it also helps you rule out stuff that you're not supposed to be IDing. So um, it really doesn't let you lean on it as much as people will have you believe. I think that it's really just a, a good aid. And, you know, like I touched on before, it lets you stay focused on the birds while you're getting that ID. So you don't have to consult a field guide. You don't have to get out your phone. Um, everything is happening just in the view. And that way you spend more time birding and less time scrolling on your phone. So I think it's awesome. All right, so the next function is pretty similar to the bird ID just for mammals. So uh, if you select the little squirrel icon on the wheel here, uh, that'll take you into the mammal ID mode. At the moment, it's not nearly as sophisticated as Merlin bird ID, which can identify basically anything in the world. Um, right now, it's it's limited to about 300 species of mammals in only uh, North America and Europe. Um, still pretty darn good if you're in one of those two continents. And it works kind of the same as the bird ID where you select the reticle, have the animal fill it up as much as possible, and you do that same ID process with the shutter button as before. While I do consider myself, you know, mostly a bird watcher, I also am an avid nature lover, you know, from the start. So uh, the more animals I 
can identify the better and having that mammal ID is just a great addition to have. So the next function I wanna talk about is one of the more simple ones. It's actually just a compass. Um, so if you're out in the wilderness, you know, it's nice to be able to know what direction you're pointing and uh, the angle at which you're pointing up or down. So the, G the AX Visio does have both those capabilities. If you're uh, the navigator type and you wanna know exactly what bearing you have, you do have the ability to do that. Uh, you also are able to know the angle of incline. Uh, so if you're you know, backpacking or something, you wanna know how steep a hill is, you have that ability too. All right, so moving on, uh, probably my favorite feature of the AX Visio is uh, what Swarovski calls the share discoveries mode. Uh, so you can find that by turning the wheel to the little downward arrow. And uh, basically what that allows you to do is mark a location with the binoculars, pass the binoculars off to somebody else, and all of a sudden the viewfinder is going to guide them to that point that you selected. So you just point the Xvasio where you want to look, press the shutter button down just like you were doing the bird ID or the mammal ID, and then as soon as you deviate from that point, the viewfinder actually points back to where that was. So if you mark it and then point to the right, it's going to point back to the left. If you mark it and point up, it's going to point back down and so on. Um, it's not something that you would really need if you're by yourself, but if you are in a group of people and you want them to quickly get on the target that you're at, you just press a button, hand it off. It takes less than five seconds for them to get onto that same point that you're looking. So a uh, really, really cool feature that I found especially useful when I was in those situations that I just described. And I think you would too, especially if you're with people that are not very experienced and you want them to really be able to grasp the moment. So, All right, so going on to the next two modes on the selection wheel, uh, they're represented by two little stars. One of them has a Roman numeral one, one of them has a Roman numeral two. Um, at the moment, what they control are the butterfly and dragonfly ID apps, which currently are only gonna work in Europe. Um, it's only a matter of time before they work in you know, North America, South America, and eventually all over the world. Just going back to the location feature, the AX Visio does know where you are because of the GPS. So uh, whenever you do bring it to Europe, you'll have those apps available if you're into insect viewing at all. Um, that leads me to possibly the most exciting thing about the AX Visio, which is that anybody can create an app for identifying anything under the sun, uh, whether that's reptiles, amphibians, wildflowers, mushrooms. I mean, the idea with the AX Visio that Swarovski had was to make it a really future-proof device that can eventually be used for so many different things. So they have created a open API for third-party app developers to contribute to this. And if you eventually want to assign those uh, butterfly and dragonfly ID modes to something else like reptiles or amphibians, that kind of thing, if uh, you're just not into the insects as much, then eventually you should be able to do that. And that's why those two modes right now are represented by those little stars is um, they're really called the first and second favorite apps. They're not actually called Dragonfly and Butterfly ID yet, because the idea is that while those are currently the only two apps that they have for them, eventually we could have anything that I just mentioned. So um, down the road, you'll be able to cater the AX Visio to what you really want to identify in the field. And, you know, no uh, disrespect to people that don't like dragonflies or butterflies that prefer amphibians or vice versa. It really just depends on what you want to look at and what fascinates you the most. So um, eventually you'll be able to just cater it a little bit more to your own experience. So uh, just to sum up, you know, I, I think by now you've probably gotten the impression that the AX Visio is quite a step up from the days of looking at a field guide where you're looking at, you know, drawings of birds and hoping that you're remembering the bird that you saw well enough to be able to match it in the, in the book. Um, even though we've come a long way since then in just the last few years, you know, having something like Merlin Bird ID or iNaturalist for identifying birds and plants on your phone uh, just by taking a picture or describing something, um, the AX Visio, I think, is really still a giant step up from all those because it takes you into like a fully immersive experience where you don't have to put your binoculars down and consult your phone or field guide to get an ID. It lets you just keep focusing on nature, stay immersed in the moment, and you know displays whatever name of the plant, animal, and you know who knows what in the future within the view, so that you can just stay focused on what you're doing. So um, I really do think that that's an impressive piece of technology. Um, I'd say that we recommend this to anybody that's looking to get, you know, a better understanding of the natural world, even if you're like a really expert birder, but you're not necessarily well versed on the plants or mammals in your area. Um, this can be a really valuable tool. Uh, if you are just some nature guru that knows all the plants and animals in your area, then, uh, and you want to expand that to the natural world all over the place, uh, you can get the AX Visio and then take it with you to Costa Rica or Botswana or, you know, Malaysia. And wherever you go because of that GPS feature that's going to know where you are, 
um, and the potential for so many different apps to be on board the device in the future, like you, you could really identify anything with this thing. So it's not necessarily something a lot of you might have thought of before, but I, I really do recommend it to anybody that wants um, a better grasp of what they're seeing in nature around them, whether it's birds, mammals, plants, or anything in between. Um, so not only can it do all that stuff, but at the end of the day, I, I just want to remind everybody that it's a really awesome pair of binoculars. Like it's, it's not as ergonomic as something that doesn't have a camera or electronics in it, but you know, life is full of trade-offs, right? And I think despite the fact that it's got all those fancy things, it's still really ergonomic and easy to hold for most folks. It's still got a good camera. It's still got fantastic optics. And look at all these different features that the AX Visio has. Like you can really tell that Swarovski didn't cut any corners because they wanted a, a future-proof, all-encompassing device that can do so many different things. And it, it really is just a fascinating piece of technology. All right, so if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for sticking around. Um, I know we've covered quite a bit of ground with the AX Visio, and there might be tons of other questions that you have that I haven't answered here. Uh, if that is the case, feel free to check this out on our website at opticsforbirding.com. If you're watching this on social media, you can always direct message us through there. But definitely the best way to get a hold of us is 877-OP4-BIRD. Uh, if you call us there, you'll get an answer right away. And uh, I'd love to chat with you and see if I can uh, either guide you toward the Exvisio or maybe something else that might suit your needs better. Once again, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon.